to see what's good. So we back at again with another video. This is a 1999 what was that Chevy Cavalier or something like that. Right now, um, customer complaint is that the vehicle is not starting. Basically, I crank no start. Right, so I'm gonna ask my boy to start the vehicle real quick and see what symptoms that the um, customer is experiencing. I see he got a little duct tape on the bumper. You now we do. <laughs> you get a fix a little later. Right, um, go ahead and start the vehicle. I'll try to start at least. Alright, so matter of fact, let's pop the hood real quick. Matter of fact, before we pop the hood, right, um, let's do some checks. Alright, so on these old model Chevy, you could do some quick checks to see what you get, right? So, first thing, the key on engine off, you're looking at the, looking for the check light. Right, you get in the check light. Once you get in the check light, that means that the ECU, sometimes the ECU is um, communicating, right? If you don't see the check light, that means the ECU is basically is not, you know, communicating. So I'm just gonna crank it real quick and the check light is staying solid. That's one way to know that the ECU is working. Also, I'm also hearing the pump in the back priming every time I turn the key off and on. So that's also a good indication that. I have a um, good ECU command, right? Our next thing I can do is just do a quick check on my um, one of the sensors up in front to see if the sensor is getting the five volt ref, right? So let's do that. Yeah, so this client has this vehicle really clean. I believe he said he has two of them. Um, so I was referred to this client by another shop, right? This guy, the 2200 F SFI. Right, so we're gonna do a real quick check here on the this is the temperature sensor. This do not carry a map or a mass airflow. So we're gonna just check real quick on the temperature sensor and see if we get a five volt ref right there. It's very easy to get to. With the help of my boy, we're gonna just do a quick check. Right, uh, so we're gonna grab the easiest sensor to get to, which is the air temperature sensor. Right. You're gonna pop that off. You want to make sure the key is on, right? Make sure that you're getting 12 volts here. Right, let's set up our meter. We on volt DC. We're getting 12 volts. Battery is very low, but still it's good enough to troubleshoot this vehicle with. Right? So right now he's on the wrong lead there. Right? So we're gonna just slightly gently probe the the front of that wire and we're looking for five volts. Let me just get in the meter. Right, so we're getting key on engine off, we're getting five volts, right? So that telling me that I have the ECU is my five volt ref is good on my ECU side. Right. So I don't have to worry about ECU right now for this crank no start. So what else could you you could probably back in? What else would I go after or you would like me to go after on this crank no start? We could try you could try spark. I see they got new coils, plug wires, spark plugs. You know, com customers complaining a lot. Staying, not really complaining. He's saying that they, you know, they made them purchase these stuff thinking, well, they will start the vehicle and clearly it wasn't. Next test we can do is pull off the coils on number one and number two or number three, whatever, whichever one, right? So we're going to just um, crank the vehicle and see if that we gain spark. What we we'll want is number one, number two to kind of jump each other coil right there. Go ahead. So we definitely gain spark. You see that is jumping the coil right there. So the customer had this in the wrong um, slot. He had number one and number four and stuff like that. So that's probably just a little oversight on his behalf. So we gain spark on number on the first coil. All right, what else could we check? Fuel. Um, we do hear the pump priming on when we start, when we put the key on. But does that mean that the injector is opening and closing? Um, what can I check? Do this have a straighter valve? I'm not sure. I do see a valve, but that's for the EVAP. All right, 
I'm not sure if I'm getting fuel to the injector. Although you're hearing the pump is coming on, that don't mean you're getting fuel coming to the top. Another thing you can do is check your fuse, right? This 10 amp fuse here, which is a mini, you just, just touch the back of the tab here. This is the ECU fuse right here. I'm getting, you can just check all while you're here to see that you're getting 12 volts on all, all of they're not related. Um, this is the ignition here. So I'm getting 12 volts here. What, what else could I check? Um, they have an ECU fuse in the side by the door. I can check that, but it's not ECU, right? It's not the ECU. All right, let's check this 10 amp here, which is general. What is that? Getting power here. All right, so this relay here is the fuel pump. You can check that fuel pump and see that if we can. Let me see. Which one is the 30? Which one is hot all the time? It's this one, I believe. Key on. Put the key on, please. The key on, I'm supposed to be getting like a hot right here. Right, which I'm getting 12. And the one opposite. And I'm getting 12 here. So this most likely will be 86. This will be 86 here, and this will be 30 here, and this will be 85. So if I switch my lead, I'll get a ground, and this might be my 87, right? So switch it off. So this relay is similar to this one. I could swap it, but it's not a relay issue, and it's not a fuel pump issue. Well, um, well power to the fuel pump. Again, that. The only thing next I can do is pop off that fuel line. Going to inject and see if I'm getting fuel coming up to the to the, um, to the rail because they did replace the fuel pump. I'm not sure if the fuel pump is good or not. Do this have a fuse for the fuel pump? I can do a current ramp. No, on your relay. So what we're going to do next is check to make sure that we're getting fuel. See, not the customer said they replaced the fuel pump. I'm just taking it off real quick. I'm seeing a little bit of fuel coming out. Let's put the key on. I stop. So we get a little fuel. Don't worry. A little fuel that drop on a rag. That's no problem. Right, so we get definitely getting fuel going to the, the rail. We're going to continue with the visuals and make sure that all the ground wires is connected. You know, we're not sure what was done. As I said, had, um, this vehicle had been to multiple garages. So make sure that we gain see the check light on so that means the ecu basically is working or on at least communicating scan tool is not because this is like um the older models All right so let's run our compression test on this vehicle to see why we're not getting no start i got my hold on just set it up real quick here got my use scope hooked up so you're gonna keep your eye on the U scope while I'm cranking. Uh, in fact, let's put this. Let's invert this. All right, let's do it again. See what's good. For some reason, the vehicle is this like. Pause in on me. Take this off. Let's pause this. Let's take a picture actually. I'm gonna press pause on this. And see what's good. Alright, so next step is compression is not looking too good. Right, I check my leads. Customer had um the coils mixed up. He had core number one and four in the front and core number two and three to the back. And then he had the firing order um, all over the place, right? So that was his fault, right? Um, I'm going to just double check my compression again using a compression gauge and 
then I would also just verify my timing, right? Probably let me let me go and get the manual and just make sure all is well with the firing order. Right, he was graciously to supply me with many of these um Haynes repair manuals that he has for this vehicle. All right, so this is a 1999. Um, right, so you can see facing the front, right, so in the one, two, three, four from the belt side, and if you notice that the firing order is the coils is one and four to the back and two and three so even if he mixed up the coils that's not a problem but what he did he mixed up the wiring also the plug wires so basically he was driving had misfires he was not getting no um, vacuum um he wasn't getting no brakes which i believe also <laughs> issue that he was getting due to you know loss of compression so I'm gonna get permission from the customer to open his valve cover and see what I find if you know probably do a leak down test um, but let's open the cover as it's fairly easy and and check and probably recheck the timing and also see what's good you see where it's getting fluid because it's it's actually getting like um, it's wet and it's soot, so yeah, see where it's basically in soot at the end of the tip of the spark plug. So when we took the valve cover off upon inspection, we noticed that the rocker arm was off the push rod, right? So that definitely explained why the there was no compression or low compression number three cylinder, right? Um, so I'm going to inform the client that he has to replace these push rods and probably the rocker arms and probably remove the head to just inspect to make sure that none of the valve um, is damaged, but it's up to him. As I said, right, so it's low compression that's causing this no start, right? Um, we did do a compression test, right, with a manual gauge and it wasn't looking too promising, right? So as I said, we're going to call this a no start due to lack of compression in this engine and take it from there. Now, this client might may ask me to do something that I don't want to do. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to have this conversation with him and let him know that, you know, you have a few of them that's also bent. So let's put them and see how they look. So we removed the push rod from this um, Chevy, right? I did inform the client that the possibility that the rocker um, could be, you know, have some wear on it. Also, the valves could be bent due to the push rod. Some of the push rods are bent, but he insists on he wants to take it to the machine shop and to see if they can straighten it and whatever. So I'm going to call this a case closed. No start due to lack of compression. Right, um, I'm going to let him make the decision what he's planning on doing. But for now... I'm just going to close this job off and lack of compression in a Chevy Cavalier was the cause of the no start. So thanks for watching. Hope you like what you saw. Like, subscribe, share, comment. You know how we do. Till next time.